Well, hello, tubers. It's a rare, beautiful day here in British Columbia, Canada. We've had a rough spring with a lot of rain. So today I figured we would talk about RVing or traveling into Canada because the tourist season is, is nearly upon us and a lot of you Americans especially are going to be coming into Canada or through Canada heading to Alaska. So let's talk about some of the requirements and rules. Now first of all you're going to need a passport and that's for everybody you're traveling with. And that's uh, generally an easy thing to do, but you got to plan ahead to get that because uh, you don't want to show up at the border. It's not like the old days where you could show up with a driver's license and just a birth certificate. Now, the thing to, to uh, consider is many people are uh, divorced or separated, so uh, any of your minor children that are 18 or under are going to need uh, permission from your other spouse to travel. And that's usually in the form of a divorce decree showing your custody arrangements and a notarized letter. If you don't have that, you could easily be turned around. Second of all, uh, you're going to be deemed inadmissible, as they call it, if you have any substantial criminal record. And uh, you're going to need to consult with them on that. And don't try lying because uh, a simple background check on the computer is going to reveal all the skeletons in the closet so keep that in mind it's not always a bar but uh, anything beyond the most uh, minimal thing and believe it or not uh, drinking and driving is one of those things that can actually prohibit you from coming in the country unless it happened a long 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 time ago and you're deemed I think rehabilitated which of course brings us to the handguns don't try bringing them uh, if you happen to have one and realize at the last minute tell the customs officer you'll be okay they'll just turn you around and tell you to leave it somewhere else you can bring a rifle in you'll need a permit you need to do that in advance uh, another thing a lot of people don't uh, realize that uh, uh, firewood and plants with soil are also generally pro completely prohibited because it doesn't uh, because we don't want our logging industry to be decimated by any sort of uh, pests or pine beetles or things like that because we already have enough problem with that. Now if you have more than $10,000 in Canadian funds, which I guess would be a little more than 7000 US, you must declare it. They're not going to take it away from you, you just have to tell them where you got it from. If you're a working stiff, you're going to have no problem demonstrating where you got the money from. They're worried about proceeds of crime. Now when it comes to liquor and tobacco, you are allowed to bring in for yourself and I highly recommend you do this because alcohol and cigarettes are very expensive here in Canada. 1.14 liters of hard liquor or 24 cans of beer or 1.5 liters of wine. That'd be, you know, two 750 mil bottles. Now that's per adult. So if there's two or three adults uh, coming, you can, you know, have a bigger amount obviously and you know even if you had a slightly uh, bigger amount whenever ever I travel abroad and I come back with beyond my exemption what I my, my rules are similar for me coming back I just tell them what I got and uh, usually they don't want to do the paperwork to levy the duties so they just let it in anyway but uh, honesty is the best policy now that you're through the border and you're gonna be enjoying Canada and all its wonder and splendor uh, you should actually have planned ahead before you even got to the border to save money. And my number one recommendation is before you cross the border, you need to fill up all your fuel tanks, propane, diesel, gasoline, fill as much of it you can carry. And buy your liquor, buy dairy products and tobacco products if you are a smoker. And uh, that way you save a lot of money when you get into Canada because these items are a lot more here so plan ahead do a good shopping at the Costco in Bellingham Washington or in uh, you know Buffalo New York or Detroit or wherever you you know gateway city you're coming through uh, and you will save money speaking of money when you get here the biggest scam that you're gonna need to avoid is don't allow people to take your US dollars and not give you a fair return on the value of it and it should be close to what the prevailing rate is for the banks you can go on Google and Google what what the buy sell spread rate is at any given time it's always changing right now I believe a Canadian dollar is worth around 74 cents US many shops and businesses don't give a fair exchange value on your dollar and they pocket that difference just by accepting your money and they're glad to break your large bills 
because they can probably make more money exchanging cash than they will selling you anything. So what you need to do is you want to go to the airport. Any of the airports that are major airports will exchange your money. You can try some banks. Sometimes you need to be a customer, but you can always give it a, a, a chance. Go to any of the chartered banks, Scotia Bank, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, Bank of Montreal. You get the idea. Even some credit unions, perhaps. Uh, in, in many of the shopping malls and places that have travel agencies, there are sometimes currency exchange bureaus. Or even uh, during the peak season, there are sometimes currency exchange bureaus right uh, when you just cross the border. Take advantage of that, even if you have to pay a small service fee of a couple bucks, uh, it is much, much better than um, you know, getting ripped off on your, your U.S. currency. And don't be worried about being stuck with Canadian money because you can convert it back when you get home or keep it for your next trip. And my last tip is more of a, st a strategy thing. Uh, you need to start booking your uh, RV park sites and campsites here for your trip in Canada because this stuff fills up, especially weekends and long weekends. And our big long weekend is Canada Day weekend, which is uh, you know the 1st of July, very close to your 4th of July. And uh, we usually have a, a civic holiday in August, depending on where you live. So that's about all I can say for quick tips. Uh, take a look at the description below and there will be a link to the government's website that has more specific information. And of course, remember folks, this information is always subject to change. Have fun out there, enjoy Canada, and keep it moving.